Ave Maria. Today I want us to reflect on the topic, Mary, Mother of Divine Love. This topic is inspired by the prayer of Pope Pius XII to Mary. In the prayer, the Pope says, Amid, amid the strings of our hearts and inspiring us love for truth and the desire to do good. The love of truth comes only from divine love. In an age and time where false food, the seed, and fake life takes the center stage, why the desire to do good is pushed to the back row. Not that people don't desire to do good, but the end or the motive for such good has to be cross-checked or re-evaluated. Many of the good done these days come from selfish rather than selfless motives. Mary, indeed, through her own life, her works, her faith, kept the truths not only in her hearts, but also exemplified it in the desire to do good. Pope Pius XII also prayed that Mary, the mother of divine love, should obtain for all people a holy fear of God so that the society might know happiness. No doubt, our society is in dear need and pursuit of happiness. Most of the choices we make, the decisions we take, and the roads we travel are geared towards happiness. However, one important ingredient that is missing is the fear of God as to seek such happiness. Happiness that is rid of the fear of the Lord could only be built on sand that mostly collapse because of the lack of foundation, namely God. Mary was devotedly happy because she puts her trust and confidence in God, and so she was able to balance her holiness and humanity. I particularly like what the Indian Jesuit priest Sipi Vaki said. He said, a saint is one who is able to combine the spirituality and humanity together by building a mature relationship with God. And that is the key to happiness. Unfortunately, we have extreme people, people who want to express piety and holiness, the void of loving their fellow human beings. They can kill for God, but hardly live sincerely with their neighbor. Besides, we have people who are extremely worldly and they orientate towards things of the world drinking, partying, charting, social media obsession, internet addiction, but they trade in life of prayers, worship in church, or obedience to God. For them, God should maintain his space in heaven while they dwell on earth. They end up silencing the divine spirit in them and forfeiting the divine love. Despite being chosen as the mother of God, Mary still ran quickly into Elizabeth's house to show love and to share our love. Give us that love which is still forever in God, obtained for families, fidelity, harmony, and peace. Stir up and confirm in the hearts of those who govern nations a clear notion of their responsibility and of their duty to foster religion, morality, and the common good, says Pope Pius XII, as he prayed to Mary. Love and peace have been an essential commodity that the world lack, and the events of these few months and weeks have shown us that love breeds peace. To live peacefully with your neighbor and other nations and people, you must love them. Christ was not joking when he gave us a command to love our neighbors, including those who do not look like us, those do not speak like us, those do not act like us, for you are to have peace of mind. With the ongoing wars, killings, bombing, and death row, we don't need a soothsayer to say that the rivers of peace is not flowing in every land. And if they are flowing, they are mixed with the blood of the innocents. And that is why the prayer of Pope Pius XII is ever relevant that we need to love and love, for we need to need love 
and peace more than before. Of course, you don't beat a child and also ask him not to cry. The Roman pontiff concludes the prayer to Mary, asking for mercy, which is an essential ingredient of divine love, just as Mary asked for mercy at Cana in Galilee. And just as your mercy is showered upon souls, O Mary, it is likewise flow over all those ills which afflict people, and indeed all Christian family. I pity on the poor, on the captives, and all those who bear persecution for the sake of justice, those who are stricken by misfortune. Hail, O Mary, mother of those who wander here below, you are our life, our sweetness, and our hope. O mother of divine love, send down your motherly blessing on all who pray to you. Send it abundantly and consolingly. Amen. That is the prayer of Pope Pius XII. But apart from that prayer, the divine love of Mary was also shown throughout our life for God and humanity. And that is a virtue we can emulate because people don't really understand the love of the Father lavish on them. As soon as this love is extended to humanity, our neighbors, it sometimes collapses like a pack of cards. Speaking about Mary's message of divine love, Pope John Paul II, during his homily at the Mass of Our Lady of Fatima in Portugal on 13th of May, 1982, on that pilgrimage, the Holy Father visited the shrine of Our Lady of Fatima to commemorate it in a very special way and admonished his audience about the need for Mary, Mother of Divine Love. During the Mass, the Holy Father said, For we, the devotees of Mary, to develop a divine love, we need four things. First, we need to consecrate ourselves to Mary, meaning accepting her to offer ourselves and the all of humankind to him who is holy, infinitely holy. It means accepting her by having recourse to our motherly heart beneath the cross and open to love for every human being. Just this week, we celebrated the All Saints. And if you're very attentive at Mass, we read from the book of Apocalypse. And it called the saints are those who consecrated themselves to God and they soak their white garment in the blood of the Lamb and they still remain as white as snow. And you can imagine if you soak your clothes in, in the blood, it's going to get stained. But the saints, those who consecrated themselves, soak their own garments in the blood of the Lamb and it was spotless. That is what consecration of the heart is to Mary. And Jesus also said that for that sake, I consecrate myself. John chapter 17, verse 19. The second thing we need to do to, the, to develop the divine love is for us to heed to the call to repentance and conversion. And that message is ever relevant to us today. That is a need for us to repent and to convert our hearts so that our hearts can beat like that of Mary. The thought things we need to do, dear friends in Christ, to develop a divine love is for us to free ourselves from anger that gather like a dark cloud over humanity. There's a lot of anger in the land. There's a lot of anger in the world. A lot of anger that people carry in their hearts. And that anger stems from the fact that people want to protect themselves. They're not just angry because they want to be angry. They're angry because deep within them, they feel insecure. And when you feel insecure, you act it out to a fellow human person. And that is why from personal anger, it becomes a community anger. From community anger, it becomes a national anger. And that is war. The anger starts from within, what is going on within us in humanity. We are very angry because we have to judge other people by our own standard. And in life, people will always be either before us or behind us or below us. But when we begin to think that humanity must be at par with us, then there's so much anger that breeds within us. And that is why a lot of people, nation, countries, humanity, they read of the divine love in their hearts. Because where they're supposed to show love to their fellow human being, 
they have allowed anger to take the maximum space within them. And that is why so much, so much that the world is not having that divine love. According to the Holy Father, for us it means a love more powerful than evil. No sin of the world can ever overcome its love. And that is what we need. That is what nations need. That is what leaders of the world need to know, that no wars, no sophisticated weapon can restore peace and love. None. But only love can conquer the world. And finally, the Holy Father seeks for us to develop that love. We must love our enemies as our neighbor and our neighbors as ourselves. Once this art has been done, Mary's appeal is not for just once. Our appeal must be taken off by generation after generation in accordance with the ever new signs of the time. How can we love our enemies as our neighbors? And how can we love our neighbors as our, ourselves? That is the mandate of Jesus. That is the love of Mary that she portrays to the world. And that is what we are given as children of God to be able to go into the world to see enemies as our neighbors and to see our neighbors as our friends. And I'm sure that sometimes when you see some neighbors, you don't need an enemy anymore. I'm talking about those neighbors, you know, those who park on your parking lots, those who, you know, blow the music all through the night. I'm talking about neighbors who are very nosy about your affairs. I'm talking about neighbors that are very very grumpy about your own success. You know, there's so many neighbors that you have that you don't need enemies anymore. But the fact is that once we are able to see them as we see ourselves, once we're able to let the mirror go up, see not only yourself, but see the other person, the world will become a better place. The world will become a peaceful place. The world will become a loving place. And with that, we too can emulate Mary, mother of divine love. And so we are ambassadors of that divine love. We should take it to art and leave that love in the world that God has given to us. Ave Maria.